thank, uh, thank you. Thanks also to, to the organizers. Uh, my name is Vicente Furio, and I'm the European Space Responsible of Agnitio. And uh, we are going to make a common presentation with Dimension Data, that is our integration partner in Poland, and introduce you a project that uh, we have implemented in Banks at Sobni BBK, that is the Polish subsidiary of Santander Group. Um, so we are talking a lot here of digital identities, virtual assistants, and so on. Uh, we are going to introduce a real project, okay? Because uh, from our perspective, uh, the main implementations are still on the contact centers, and that's what we are going to share with you. Um, the presentation will be divided in three. So first, uh, I will introduce our vision as one of the Polish biometric leaders in the market. Uh, then Christoph, that is the sales director of uh, Dimension Data, will uh, present the Banks and Sony case. And uh, finally, uh, regretfully, Marcin Mar Mar Lewandowski from the bank is, uh, is not coming. So we have the project leader in Dimension Data who is uh, going to introduce the future evolution of the project to a multi-biometric intelligent uh, system. Okay. So our vision, first the evolution, I think that we all know that uh, the technology began years ago in government. Uh, we began in forensic systems, working with uh, forensic uh, police laboratories. <coughs> and uh, right now, uh, voice biometric systems are deployed in more than 50 countries worldwide. We are deploying databases to identify criminals. We are deploying also large systems for intelligence and defense agencies. And uh, I think that in that level, the technology has uh, reached the maturity. Then we began in the contact centers some years ago now. Uh, and first we began also prosecuting or following the bad people. We have partners here in, in this room that are analyzing more than 200 million calls every year in the US, for example, and trying to track or to compare uh, voices of the speakers in the contact center against blacklists. After that, we began to authenticate customers, uh, both on real time using that type of approach of real time authentication, and also, of course, using passphrases and that kind of technology that is the one implemented in, in Santander program. Okay. Um, and in the last three years, what we are seeing is an increase of digital identities, cloud ID platforms, and also an increase of multi-channel systems where the classic telephonic channel has to combine with web applications based in web RPC or other technologies, video chats, uh, mobile applications like the virtual assistants that they're introducing in the, in the other room, etc. So as we said, we are reaching the maturity in, in the government, I think that also in the fraud detection, and we are taking off that customer authentication. Uh, I think that here the, the providers, because we are technology providers, but we, we rely on, on partners, of course, to, to deploy the projects, and we are beginning to see how the proof of concepts are really evolving to real projects with, with millions of, of customers being authenticated and, and being enrolled. So now we are facing new use cases, or at least in Agnitio, some customers and partners are asking us uh, to go a step beyond. The first one I'm very interested is the vocal signature. So what we have is uh, partners that are uh, trying to complete, um, let's say, digital certification systems with the voice evidence. So the idea here is to use the voice to sign telematic operations, trading operations, to sign even documents, that kind of things, okay? So it's arriving, it's arriving very hard and, and the projects are uh, imply uh, thousands or millions of transactions because here uh, we were, our colleague in, in NICE were, was talking that, of course in the contact center, uh, the number of calls every year is not is not uh, very high, but if, if I'm going to use the technology for transactions, for example, that number of transactions can be higher. 
So I think that for us it, it can be a, a, a big use case in the future and uh, that, that type of systems can, can imply not only large volumes of voice prints but more than that more usage of each voice print uh, by the users. Okay? Also, of course, Cloud ID, and then let me say that I will explain their strategy. Uh, more and more integrators there are in that uh, contact center as a cloud uh, type of systems. Okay? So we are there. And we are also beginning to see an increase in e-government needs. Okay? Uh, there are some countries, in emerging countries, uh, where Proof of life type of system, like the one uh, introduced by, by Nuance uh, before, are being deployed. We are also deploying that type of systems, for example, in South Africa, also in Mexico for another big bank, DBBA, Bank Over, and we are seeing an increase. Okay? Uh, there are some countries where the citizens don't have an identity, and the fact is that with voice biometrics, we can not only authenticate them, but even help them to create an identity, an online identity. And here in that case, what we think from a technology perspective is that the native anti-spoofing mechanism is the key, okay? Because you have to demonstrate that someone is alive and you have to do it on the same time of the authentication, using the same passphrase. That is the key. Not using another type of algorithm, but with the same passphrase. We have other trends. Of course, uh, all, the, all the providers, uh, we are continuously fighting with the noise problem, okay? So we are continuously investing in, in trying to, to behave better in very noisy conditions and also with very short quantity of, of, of audio uh, because other use cases are, are arriving, uh, identifying people in borders, for example, searching some terrorists in the airports. It's something that our government partners are asking us that type of comparison on real time between uh, voices that they are capturing with microphones and, and so on. And for that, we need to behave very good with noisy conditions and we need to be able to make the comparisons with uh, short quantities of, of audios. Also, it's something that uh, we are seeing in the trading floors where uh, some power partners, they are authenticating counterparts in trading operations and of course, there is a very few quantity of, of audio there. Uh, then the 100% multi-channel, I will not insist, because I think that uh, our partners and the people that is really deploying systems in the contact centers, they have more experience than, than, we, than we do. Uh, but here the key is that if I uh, interface with the company, uh, through a video chat using a web RPC uh, application, through a mobile application, uh, through the classic phone channel, the passphrase has to be the same. So when we talk about multi-channel in Agnitio, what we say is that you create your passphrase once and you use it in all the channels. And I, I think that that's the key, at least for the voice part of that omni-channel approach that, that we are all introducing here. And finally, one of the trends we have, and maybe one of the, the most complicated, okay, is the one-to-end -one identification in Aviers. And here I don't see a lot of final customers, but I'm sure that uh, the banking directors, they would be very, very happy if using voice biometrics technology, we are able to solve the identification problems, okay? Because usually now the systems, how they work is that we authenticate someone, so we make a one-to-one -one comparison, okay? Of course, we can make one-to-one -one comparisons and, and give an answer uh, for small uh, subsets of customers, for authenticating people of the company, something like that. But the trend here is, uh, and how we see the future is that the uh, customer calls the idea, interfaces with an open question idea and with that the small quantity of net audio he's identified against all the customer base and then he's authenticated and we're working on that okay so our way of working on that of course is trying to maintain our leadership in the technology core uh, and we are developing the fifth generation of technology we are now in the fourth one it will be ready at the end of the year 
and I will give you some keys. Uh, for both families, what we are applying is some neural network analysis, and uh, also for channels like mobile or, or web, what we are trying now to do is to use information of, uh, of the wide bandwidth, and with that, uh, we expect to have an increase of 50% in the accuracy of the results, okay? It will also imply a better performance when we are talking about large operations, when we are talking about intelligent systems, uh, where partners that we have, they are analyzing millions of calls every day, it will also apply that. But in the contact center, mainly it will apply in an increase of the accuracy. Then for text dependent, uh, where we are developing is a new anti-spoofing mechanism to reduce the calibration and therefore to reduce the timings and the cost of the implementation of the project. Uh, because I agree that sometimes it's hard to implement such systems and uh, sometimes if the customers are only going to call one, two, three times per year, sometimes the, the final users, they, they have some, some questions, okay? Uh, so what the partners are requiring us is mechanism to reduce the implementation times, and we are working on that, okay? Uh, we are also working in uh, analyzing better or trying to check the quality of the enrollments because uh, in some of our last implementations, uh, our partners and our customers are telling us that most of the problems comes from bad enrollments. So it's something that, that we have to solve, of course. And finally, the, the famous one-to-end, -one, okay? So let's see, uh, hopefully next year we will be here and I can tell you that we are able to authenticate someone, sorry, to identify and then authenticate someone uh, uh, in a database of uh, one million customers, but by now the technology is, is not allowing that, okay? And in the free speech family of products, uh, two things are arriving. I will begin with the last one, language ID. So what we are doing is uh, that using the same engine, so without two different engines, we would be able to detect the language of the, of the speaker and also the modal language. Okay? For example, it's very clear that I am in Spanish. Sorry, no one is perfect. Okay? <laughs> so we will be able to detect that. Vicente is trying to speak in English, and in fact, he's in Spanish, uh, says that. Okay? Um, and then the big thing that we have, and that is now in production, in intelligent and in fraud, and uh, our partners are working, implementing uh, that new feature, is a speaker clustering. And I think that we will finalize with that because it is very important. We are now able, without any data data, metadata, of grouping calls only by the biometric characteristics of the speakers, okay? So, um, in, the, in the government part of the business, it is very important because we are enabling things like uh, discovering new criminals in networks, okay? Maybe you are tracking a device of a known uh, suspect, but this suspect is uh, using another device to, to, to talk with another, another criminal of his organization. We apply the cluster and we are able to make those kind of relationships, okay? Uh, and also in the, in, the, in the fraud arena, uh, one of our partners here, they are also trying to work with uh, speaker clustering and sharing with us their conclusions. Uh, there we are able to detect, uh, for example, how uh, fraudsters can try to use the contact center to get information and then commit a fraud in the online channel, that kind of things, okay? Uh, because, for example, I can be uh, trying to uh, spoof some identities and calling an insurance company, uh, claiming for a very small amount of money, I don't know, 20 pounds, 40 pounds, and the company will not investigate it, okay? But if I apply clustering, and as you partners, you have all the metadata, and we are able to tell you that the 100 calls are from one single identity, of course there is a fraud there. So data speaker clustering is a patented technology of an ETO, and uh, we are going to implement it, the technology in all the products, okay, in free speech. And uh, with that, I pass the button to Kristen Dukal from Dimension Data. So, thank you for the introduction. Uh, my name is Kristen.
Dimitri Forsal, I'm coming from Dimension Data Poland and I would like to present you the uh, short overview of the project that uh, we are still implementing in the uh, BZWK map because it's not only the project is not only the uh, voice biometry but it's a little bit more uh, but then, <coughs> then uh, I will tell you a little bit more what, uh, what's going to, to happen in the future. But before that uh, I have some homework because I'm from Poland, as I mentioned, but my boss is in London and I don't know how his network is working. So before I start the project, I will give you the short overview about dimension data. So it will be one slide. Uh, we are from uh, technological companies and we are providing the products. We are not uh, producing any products, we are just the integrator. So the company is, uh, is uh, belong to NTT Group and uh, Japan uh, giant and to their revenue something around 7.5 uh, million US dollars. We are serving uh, all, let's say, big part of the company is quoted on the London Stock Exchange, the New York Stock Exchange, also in the Fortune 100, Fortune 500. Uh, we are located in the uh, Gartner graphs uh, for the uh, communication uh, provider for the collaboration as well as uh, professional services. And we do have more or less uh, 30,000 uh, people. And our core activity is networking, security, collaboration, and uh, contact center. And <coughs> it's, uh, I think it's important uh, because it's, it's connected to what, uh, what was mentioned by you on the previous presentation, that to implement a project is very important to know the uh, customer environment. And as a dimension Poland, we are working with these uh, companies that are here. It's not only the personal marketing of dimension data, it's, uh, it's uh, the way how we are trying to sell the products, how we are selling the solutions. Because my problem uh, very often is who is the client. If we take the, uh, the bank as a, as a, as a let's say, uh, potential buyer, then the question is who we should approach. If you approach the person from the contact center, okay, but then we can receive the question mark from the security guy. Then we may receive the question mark from the uh, IT guy. Then we may receive another question mark from the business guy that, well, if it's good for the image of the bank or it's not good for the image of the bank. So this is the, let's say, challenge for, uh, for us having in the, pocket the, in the pocket the good product is not enough. Then we need to have the proper approach and to answer the question how to implement the product for the contact center, how to implement the product in the current environment of the customer. But of course there are some uh, business drivers that are, exist and in our, in our case um, they, they were quite specified by the, by the customer. So, um, Mike, I think we can come yeah. on the Hello, my name is uh, Miko Izaleski. I'm the person responsible for professional services uh, division. So, actually, I was the person also personally responsible for uh, implementation in, uh, in Group of Santander. Uh, and let me tell you a couple of words about what were the drivers to implement voice biometry. Uh, it's not only our perspective as dimension data, but also perspective of the customer. So, I mean, the, 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 the bank, uh, they were struggling with sort of things. First of all, uh, their old process was uh, based on pin authentication of the telephony system. So each customer, when he was trying to reach the agent, he was forced to do uh, some sort of game with the pin number. So first of all, you have to remember the pin number. And the second of all, what was happening on the telephony system was that the uh, system was doing sort of quiz. So he was asking not for the full pin number, but for example for the fourth or the sixth ticket of your pin. Uh, nevertheless, you have to remember pin number. You are also struggling with counting. Okay, what is my fourth ticket right now? I'm always having a problem. That. That's why I'm not calling actually <laughs> using pin numbers. Uh, so that was major things from customer perspective. Uh, the other part is of course the security. If you use the pin number and use DTMF tones, it's really easy to record it uh, and to find out what are the numbers and use it later on. Uh, the other thing 
uh, not from the customer perspective, but from the microbank perspective, was the uh, need of the refreshment of the channel they were providing for the customers. So the idea was to eliminate the, the PIN technology to launch something really new, which in fact, if you look at the Polish market, is really brand new because actually WK is the third, third bank in Poland and we are 40 million people country. Uh, and that new technology drives a uh, better overview how the bank is acting on the market, how it responds to the customer's needs. And the last thing, when we go through the IPR, was the another factor. I mean, number of people had problems with the pin quiz. So, at the end, they were finishing the process on the IPR, and they were uh, transferred to the agent, and then the, they were struggling again, because they were asked a number of questions. Again, I need to remember my personal data, it's the problem. And there are two factors uh, of that thing. Uh, one is that, again, customer is frustrated, and the second thing is that, as we already said today, uh, we are also fighting, uh, fighting with things like average handling time. So, uh, in most of the cases, agents were uh, uh, forced to uh, ask the customers the questions, and that was causing the whole call process to take longer. Uh, so, those are the factors uh, that uh, the drivers that uh, were obligating us to implement something new. And let me give uh, a word to Christoph. Okay. So the, uh, the solution is the, was the initial system and uh, the slide is uh, giving you a little bit information about the scale of the project and uh, the size of the project. Uh, so it was connected to the genesis of so the platform that is used by the contact center and is used right now by, uh, here is uh, 600 seats but right now is even, uh, even more. Uh, and uh, is connected to all the uh, infrastructure, telephone infrastructure that uh, was uh, in the bank, uh, Alcatel and, uh, and Cisco. Uh, of course, it, it creates uh, some, let's say, challenges during the implementation because it's not only, like I, like I mentioned before, it's not only the, um, the product itself, like uh, Akisha, but all the connections is also the, the important for the bank. Uh, what did the end uh, the bank uh, achieve? I think that uh, it was on the presentation uh, in the morning, so more or less the same achievement. Uh, so uh, increase the, the security of the transactions, uh, reduce the time uh, for uh, for a call by 20, 40 seconds. This is what we receive from the bank. Uh, of course, increase the comfort, like uh, like Michael mentioned, uh, for for the uh, for the customers. And uh, also is giving the bank uh, right now, at least in Poland, the possibility to use this project uh, as a, uh, for the image campaign that the bank is the bank is innovative and is providing the customers with the uh, most uh, secure and most advanced uh, solutions. But it's not the end. Uh, so uh, we are working with the bank and uh, thinking. Okay, voice, uh, voice biometrics is one thing, but uh, it's not enough. Again, I will take the part which uh, was uh, Martin supposed to take, but he couldn't join us today, unfortunately. So those, those slides are prepared by my machines uh, from, from Bank. He's an architect uh, working from Bank side for this project. Uh, at the end, I was the person, as I said, I was personally involved uh, from the very beginning, so let's Let's tell you a couple of words uh, about how it went. Um, so, uh, at the start of the internal process, uh, bank was identifying biometric technologies, not only the voice mode, but biometric technologies that might be implemented. At the end, uh, they came to the conclusion that what they need right now is the voice biometric and hand biometric provided by Hitachi as well. Uh, so, um, what was the beginning? We started the project in 2014. Uh, that was the moment when we were uh, comparing together with Bank uh, different voice technologies and voice biometric technologies. So we were responsible uh, for sort of thing being a judge. We were uh, clearly explaining what are the differences between the systems because uh, as they mentioned that we had that kind of knowledge, uh, not only from Ambition but also from other vendors. 
Uh, at the end, the decision came that we want to implement the solution. I mean, the bank want to implement the solution with the show, and we started the overall process uh, in 2015. I remember January 2015 that we had the first workshop, workshop with the bank in Agisho. Uh, we did the training. That was a training also for the machine data, but not only for, for us as an integrator, but also for the people from bank side, which were responsible for the architecture of the core banking system. Uh, what we had to do, uh, because of the time, we wanted to launch it as soon as possible, uh, and it's working right now. So we we omitted some part of things that I'm going to explain later on. At the end, we have decided for a direct integration of Magnetio with Genesis system. Uh, that is sort of shortcut that I will explain on another slide. But uh, as we are here in 2016, uh, we have it uh, currently integrated directly with Genesis, and what we need to do this year uh, is to implement the thing called Biohub. So Biohub is the answer for all the problems that the bank is struggling implementing voice solution, voice biometric solution. Uh, in fact, it's not only the API as, on, as it is displayed on the slide, uh, but it is sort of universal interface that will allows that will allow. Uh, different biometric systems, not only the voice one, but hand or face or something else, to be connected into the one core system. Uh, so let me explain a little bit more about the, the biohub. That's how we call it. Um, if you compare different biometric systems, you are also facing different uh, security ratio. For example, voice, as we all know probably, is not that secure as uh, hand, full hand uh, biometric. Uh, so you need to have a one point where you need, where you can control all, the, all of those things, uh, uh, where you can control the security level of a particular customer. Uh, the biggest problem here is that currently market is not providing a solution that will give you overview from one platform, one system for different biometric technologies. You could of course try to buy a bundle. But at the end, you want to choose the solution which is the best for you. I mean, the terms of security, the flexibility that you want to have. So the decision of Bank was to launch a project where they will develop technology that will allow them to connect different vendors from different regions, different kind of biometric solutions into the one platform. Uh, thanks to that, they are able to resolve a number of problems. Uh, First of all, it's, it's, it's from their perspective, it's the technical area. Because at the end, those biometric systems have to be connected to the core, core banking systems, I mean the transaction systems where you perform the money transfers. Uh, so, Biohub gives you the interface, and he's kind of a proxy between the biometric systems we have and the core banking systems. Uh, thanks to that, having the biometric system, uh, you can control in one point all the things that are going with the customer. So, for example, if the customer is calling to us and asking for uh, being deleted from the bank, I mean, he's cancelling his account and so on, you need to have one point where you can easily do it and you can really control it. If you have different business, business units, like you have a retail customer and a big customer, you want to launch different security levels for biometric. And this is again the point where you can easily define and adapt the security levels that you want to um, apply for the VIP customers and for the retail. Uh, all those things uh, merged together are creating the Biohub system. Uh, what we want to also do with the Biohub system is the things that we have faced uh, during the implementation. So uh, we saw, and we also probably all, all of us know that, the enrollment process of collecting the customer data, the voice is very critical for the uh, for the performance of biometric. So uh, Yohab will also give uh, sort of things uh, to allow the customer, to the bank, to automate the tests on the quality of the enrollment. So each customer who, who will be enrolled into the system will be validated very deeply. It's, we call that stress testing of the, of the enrollment. Uh, if the, this particular data is very good to secure his account. Um, 
having that, because I already mentioned that uh, we have the uh, voice biometric, we have the hand biometric, bank is thinking also about face recognition and face biometric. Uh, we will have one system where we will connect the face biometric into the GitHub, and then we don't have any additional software work in connecting it to the core system because it is already unified. And that's the things we have done, and that's the things we want to do this year. Thank you. Is that so? Of course, you want to look for these universal um, uh, APIs. And it, how widely dispersed and, and prevalent is BioHub in the finance in industry, or was this just something that was selected for this particular implementation? Well, uh, this particular project is the first one we have made in Poland. Ah. But I'm traveling a lot within the financial customers because that's core of our market with the biometrics that we do in dimension data, and I see that. Most of the people when we talk about with this architecting back, they are struggling with that kind of problem that they cannot identify right now the solution to merge all the biometrics and to have it ready to talk. Because actually, if you want to implement the biometrics and you need to do it rapidly, still you need the solution that will allow you to control all of them and measure how it's going on. So uh, if I would say that was the driver from the case study we had, we saw that we need it. But at the end, I see that market is really looking for some sort of things. Actually, just kind of follow up on, on we talked about this challenge about the organizational challenge, right, in terms of connecting business and IT and security um, and contact center. Um, and this is fundamental. I mean, I think Darius brought it up this morning as far as USA and like how they're able to there's a technical, you know, problem solved with organizational. And maybe maybe tie it directly to, to this uh, Hispanic. But I mean, what are some of the ways to tie those teams together? Or like when you look at some of the metrics, you know, what are what, what are what are reasons to, to really have an executive buy-in from each business unit on going with some of these type of deployments? First of all, our experience is limited to one successful deal. So it's, it's, it's a bit limited. We have a couple of open discussion and. Uh, the, the most challenging thing is to find a way that all of these parties are really engaged in the problem. Some of them are in the situation that they are afraid about doing anything. Like, like no. So the contact center is working, it's working okay. So with some, some stuff like, like that, I will only have a problem. This is the uh, kind of thing. So uh, what uh, argumentation we are using, and the, I think this is the best one, uh, is the security of the transaction. But it's also the problem because uh, <coughs> we as an integrator, we do not have the access to the real data about uh, some, let's say, fraud or cases in the market. And uh, what I'm uh, receiving personally very often is that, Krzysztof, well, how I can prepare the business case for my management board for such a project? So this is the question that I cannot answer. The only answer that I can have is that if something happens, and uh, you will not prepare for that, then I will implement the project with somebody else because you will be fired. <laughs> <laughs> this is the simple way. And uh, what we are trying to do, we are trying to do this argumentation about security mm -hmm. um, because I think this is the, the best way to open the budget for the, for the customer. Okay. So you also alluded to the engagement model. There's all these parties internally that have in various interests in yeah. Implementation. Did you develop an engagement model or prescription for how you, you know, what's the entry point for the, mm -hmm. the gig? So uh, for the uh, for for this purpose for the bank, I think that the most important issue was this uh, relation with the contact center people, and uh, to reduce the uh, the time for for the co for the cost and also. Uh, I think that I can give this information because uh, I received from the bank. The number of the people that I remember the passport is very, very low. It's one digit, even a small one. Yeah. So then you can imagine how the person responsible for the contact center, how they feel, what they are doing. Yeah. The, their job is just to uh, establish the, the, the new access to the 
uh, for, for the clients to the to the banking system. This is not the, the way how they would like to, to earn money. So in this case, the, the, for me, the most important part was, was the contact center. Thank you.